Uh, resuming debate, and the honourable member for Brandon Suris. Trust is earned when actions meet words. Mr. Speaker, I'll be splitting my time with the member from Pope Lemo as well, and I think it's worth repeating. Trust is earned when actions meet words. It's unfortunate that today that we're here in this House having to call out the Finance Minister for breaking the trust of Canadians. The Prime Minister and the Finance Minister arguably are the two most important, powerful officials in government. We as parliamentarians, and more importantly Canadians, must be able to trust that they will act in the public interest rather than in their own private interest. As the Prime Minister has said, sunshine is the best disinfectant. So let's lift up the rug, throw open the doors, and reveal what is in all those numbered companies the Finance Minister has set up in various provinces. Now, the Liberals are clearly not very comfortable talking about this topic. Either at town halls or through correspondence and phone calls, they have had to defend the bad life decisions the Minister has made. And for folks at home wondering why we are having this debate, it's because Canada is not a backwards country where elected officials get to live off the largesse of the office they hold. When the actions of a minister of the Crown are in dispute, the minister has a moral duty to provide the information needed to uphold the trust bestowed unto him or her by Canadians, but also to the overall institution. Parliament is bigger than any one minister. Regardless of one's self-appointed <coughs> importance, the reputation of all of us is at risk due to the mistakes of one individual, particularly when the circumstances of the incident are as serious as this. Politicians should not personally benefit from the office they hold. Ministers of the Crown are fairly compensated for the work they do on behalf of Canadians. They don't need to set up numbered companies that are designed in such a manner as to avoid giving up control of their assets. We are here because the Minister of Finance did not live up to his mandate letter. To quote the mandate letter from the Prime Minister, it said the following, and I quote, You must uphold the highest standards of honesty and impartiality in both the performance of your official duties and the arrangement of your private affairs should bear the closest public scrutiny. This is an obligation that is not fully discharged by simply acting within the law, end quote. We are here because the minister thought, in some twisted world, that he could have his cake and eat it too. His actions in this ethical quagmire do not live up to the standards to which ministers of the Crown should aspire. The Minister of Finance has clearly broken the spirit of the conflict of interest rules. There is no ambiguity about that. He said he was going to put his assets in a blind trust but then conveniently did not. Regardless of whatever lame excuse or spin the government tries to use today to defend the minister, it does not pass the smell test. No one is buying it. His approvals ratings have dramatically dropped, and their narrative of fighting the, for the middle class is not even believed on the pages of the Toronto Star anymore. And you know, a Liberal minister is in trouble when the Toronto Star starts criticizing their behaviour. Good point. Good point. This bad news is taking a toll on the minister's public approval. According to a new poll, he is now the most negatively received member of the Prime Minister's Cabinet. Forty-six percent of those who knew of him gave the, the Finance Minister the thumbs down, while 23 percent said he's done a good job in his position so far. Well, Mr. Speaker, for the benefit of all members, those numbers are even lower than President Trump's approval in the United States. <laughs> Furthermore, if the Finance Minister continues to drag the government down with him, he will soon find himself joining his former colleagues John McCollum and Stéphane Dion doing the Embassy cocktail circuit with the prefix His Excellency added to his business card. So that's where we find ourselves today. The ethical pyramid that has been constructed has come crashing down, and the Minister of Finance has no one to blame for this but himself. And time and time again, he has avoided doing the right thing, which is, for a start, to apologize. For two years, the finance minister held shares worth approximately $20 million in Morna Chappelle, a company that he regulates. He held these shares outside of a blind trust, 
despite his own colleagues believing his shares were in a blind trust. Right after being sworn in as Finance Minister, he spoke to the CBC in an interview. It was in that interview where he said, and I quote, I resigned my position as chair of the firm that I was chair of before, and I expect that all my assets will go into a blind trust, end quote. Well, it turns out that didn't happen. His assets were not placed in a blind trust, but were set up in an elaborate way that still allowed him to control them in a numbered company in Alberta. Only after the finance minister was revealed to not be holding his assets in a blind trust did he acknowledge his wrongdoing and agree to sell those assets. And he continues to hold several numbered companies, but the assets held within those companies are not publicly known. While he held these shares, the finance minister also introduced Bill C-27, which would create targeted benefit pension plans. He, we also know that benefit pension plans are a highly specialized product offered by Morneau Chappelle. And it was just announced the Ethics Commissioner has launched an investigation for his involvement with C-27, particularly in his shares in Morneau Chappelle, as the, his shares in Morneau Chappelle rose in value after the legislation was announced. And these are the facts that the Liberal member from Eglinton Lawrence just called tissues of nonsense, Mr. Speaker. Well, these costly mistakes have tarnished the minister's reputation and from media reports will end up costing him roughly $5 million after his assets are divested. For someone who is as educated and successful as he, it boggles the mind how he could have thought his actions were ethical. Even the most casual political observer would have recognized that the Minister of Finance should not have control over his assets, which surely would be impacted by the decisions he would make in office. So today, in this debate, we will ask the Finance Minister to reveal all assets he has bought, sold, or held within all his private companies or trust funds since being sworn in. We are calling for this information to determine if his financial interests have conflicted with the public duties, with his public duties. Now, the Liberals may try and just shrug this off and pretend this debate isn't happening. In fact, I suspect that many will not even try to defend the Finance Minister's ethical lapses. They know they cannot defend the indefensible. They can bob and weave during question period and avoid answering the tough questions. But if they, for one moment, tried doing this with their constituents back home, the wrath and fury would sure be quick to follow. Mm -hmm. So today, many members will lay out the argument for why this motion should pass. You will hear why the Minister of Finance should do the right thing and begin the process of revealing what he has bought and sold with since he became the finance minister. Then and only then can we, do, can we be sure that he did not personally financially gain for the decisions he has made while being in office. To my friends in the Liberal Party, this is your chance to stand up and demand better from those who govern us. Regardless of political stripe, I think we can call, we can all rather, admit the Minister of Finance has been less than forthcoming with Canadians. If the shoe's on the other foot, or if the shoes were on the other feet, Mr. Speaker, many of the MPs who sit across from us today would be in an uproar with what has transpired these past two years. From secret villas to numbered companies to legislation that will financially benefit the Minister's bank account, it paints a very troubling picture. I call on every MP and demand better. Demand that the Prime Minister is held to his word. Demand that ministers are held to a higher standard than finding a loophole and then proclaim innocence. Canadians are smarter than to fall for the claptrap that is far too often peddled. We know in our guts that what has become known is not only morally unacceptable, there are very, they are, there are very clear breaches of the law. Trust takes years to build, Mr. Speaker seconds to break and forever to repair. The very least the Finance Minister could do is to be transparent and forthcoming with Canadians. Thank you. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Longueuil Saint Hubert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for Brandon Source for his speech. Knowing that he is acting in 
good faith and that he is a logical person, does he not think that it's a little bit pathetic to see uh, the fact that the, there are very few government members here in the House? I can only see three Liberal MPs right now. Maybe two? Order. Order. I would remind the Honourable Member that it is not allowed to make reference to the absence or presence of a member in the House. The Honourable Member for Longueuil saint hubert Excuse me, uh, Mr. Speaker. It just seemed normal that I would notice how, that uh, the Liberal government seems to have very little interest in today's question. I think it's a little bit sad to see that these people talked about so many things that were so positive. They said they were going to do politics differently. They talked about sunshine, disinfecting everything. Well, today, it's clear that the Minister of Finance doesn't care about any of this cynicism. There, he's got maybe $12 million in his account because of this. But clearly, this is decreasing the public's enthusiasm for politics and increasing their cynicism. And for us, I think it's discouraging to see people saying, well, politics isn't good for anything. Even the Minister of Finance and the system are not uh, serving the public well. Uh, the Honourable Member. Or Brandon Suris. Well, I want to thank my colleague for the question. Uh, he's quite right. Um, Mr. Speaker, we talk about the government wants to be the ones that talk about sunny ways, but Mr. Speaker, there's a huge cloud hanging over that whole government these days, and Canadians here, here. know about it, and we hear about it every day on our phone calls and our emails and the messages that are coming to us. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll turn into a thunderstorm, uh, Mr. Speaker, because there's been a lot of lightning strikes over there in regards to uh, some of the uh, efforts of the minister to diffuse some of the obvious things that I've quoted today that he has been charged with, actually, and found guilty of and paid a fine for. Um, and I mean, there is a huge vacuous uh, presence of policy in this government uh, trying to do things that will happen in some decade down the road. And even in the debate today, I was listening in my office before I came to give my speech, Mr. Speaker, and the, my honorable colleague from Simcoe York tried to bring some relevance to the House in regards to some of the speeches from the Liberals trying to defend the Minister today, and the Minister's name or the whole situation never even entered into the discussion of the Liberals, and so it proves they're embarrassed by this whole effort uh, that the Finance Minister has got them in, and it's also the fact that he isn't even being able to be honest with his own Prime Minister. Now these, as I said in my speech, are the two most important people in government. What can Canadians trust, Mr. Speaker? Questions and comments. I guess I come on time. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And the introducer of the motion that we're debating here today, I uh, posed the question in regards to uh, f the former Prime Minister uh, Stephen Harper. And the Canadians need to, to be aware that what we have is, uh, uh, you know, the opposition parties are happily working together jointly on this uh, particular uh, issue. And uh, what they're trying to say and, and imply uh, is that, uh, you know, Stephen Harper's uh, rules, the same rules that we we are living by today uh, were, are not uh, good enough. Uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, all 338 members of Parliament uh, are expected to abide by uh, abide by the very same uh, rules uh, that, in fact, Stephen Harper had to abide by. So we have seen a, a politicization uh, of this issue to an extreme in which we have both opposition parties working hand in hand uh, on, on the issue, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I'm wondering if the, my colleague across the way would not recognize that it is important that we have confidence in the Ethics uh, Commissioner's office. Uh, we on this side of the House do. Do the Conservative Party have, or does the Conservative Party have confidence in the Ethics Commissioner's office? Member for Brandon Suris. Speaker, I'm glad that the member from Winnipeg North raised that because I have utmost uh, confidence in the Ethics Commissioner's office. I don't have any uh, uh, confidence in the, in the uh, Minister of Finance's ethics in regards to what I've talked about in my speech today for the things that he's already paid a fine for. Um, uh, I guess the one thing about Stephen Harper is that you can be sure that he left a, a, a surplus to the Canadian public, uh, and this government is running $30 billion deficits every year, 
they never talked about the fact that he reduced the debt, never mind the deficit, by $30 billion in his first two years in government before the 2008 recession hit, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. And so the member can stand up and talk about rules all he wants. It's the accountability. If he wants to talk about the opposition working together, yes, we are. Why wouldn't we? This is one of the most unethical situations I've ever seen in government, and I've been in it for 17 or 18 years now, Mr. Speaker. And uh, so, you know, I just feel strongly that we're not only working together as the opposition, we're working with Canadians. Here, 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 here.